What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic new year or hopefully a fantastic day today. It is so nice to be back with you guys and make a new video for you. So today's video, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be introducing you guys, the Humboldt Squid. So Humboldt Squids are, unlike many other squid species or unlike many cephalopod species, why is that? Because their reputation and attitude is to the extreme. These things are extremely ferocious, but they're also just extremely beautiful at the same time. You know, like most of all the beautiful animals are pretty uh, destructive. Um, but these animals also have a superpower, but I'm not going to say that yet because it, I'm going to tell you guys shortly in the video. But before we get into the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. I'll greatly appreciate it, you guys, which you guys already know. And even though I haven't uh, made a video in about two months about that, we have gained a few subscribers, and I was really shocked about that. And I was so happy that we gained a few subscribers, even though I haven't posted any content yet, which hopefully is telling me that my videos are getting out there more, even though I haven't posted anything, and hopefully more people are sharing them. So um, it was a really amazing um, thought and idea. So um, hopefully that's what happened. I'm just... Very excited, you guys. Got a lot of goals for this channel this year. I want to try and uh, make it as entertaining as I can and teach you guys even more about cephalopod. So let's get right into the video, guys, of our humble squid. All righty, here we go. About the humble squid. If it wants to move for me. So the humble squid. So humble squid are part of the almost Straphidae family. So... Some species in the Omostraphidae family are part of the flying squid community. And so humble squids are actually scientifically more known as jumbo flying squid. Now, if you're asking me, Gary, why are they called jumbo flying squid? They're called jumbo flying squid because when predators are going after them, there's just an example, a few predators, um, species of sharks and also sperm whales. So when these animals are chasing after them, what the flying squid, the jumbo flying squid or humble squid can do is it can fly out of the water. And that's why if you've ever seen a humble squid on uh, a picture on the internet or a video, these animals have huge fins on the back. And now these fins can help them um, jump out of the water a lot better because it helps them propel a lot more. And also helps them with a lot of stability as well. And humble squids also live on the eastern side of the Pacific Ocean. And so they live right on the western coast of America, Central America, and South America. But they've also have been seen in Alaska too. Now, I don't know if you guys have thought of this, but I definitely have thought of this. It's really interesting that they've seen squid in part near the Northern hemisphere because around here where it's circled, these are pretty warm waters and then it goes up to cold waters. And now that can be quite a drastic change of temperature. So that is part of one of the superpowers. Again, that we'll surely get into the video. And last but not least, they can grow to as big as six feet in length and can reach to a hundred plus pounds. Now, imagine seeing that in the ocean when you're on the eastern side of the Pacific Ocean. You're just looking down, and it must be looking at, it might be like imagining like seeing a giant bullet swimming by. Like That would be really, truly fascinating to witness in person, to see a beautiful humbled squid flying, uh, I guess, flying by as well. So more humbled squid information. So humbled squids are commonly mistaken as giant squids. Now, why is that? Because humble squids kind of look almost identical to giant squids. They kind of have like the same identical eye. They have that long, elongated body, uh, big fins. They kind of have the same exact suction cups as well. And uh, their primary color is red. So talking about red, 
They are extremely fierce cephalopods. They are very large, very muscular, and very aggressive. They have a reputation known as red devils, which many people fear. Now, why do people fear humbled squids and call them red devils? Well, if you kind of think of it, because what I've already told you already, they kind of have a devil reputation, uh, very aggressive, very mean. And really, they don't care what's in front of them. They will eat it or just take it down. And I don't know if you guys remember a few videos um, ago that I've made. I talked about one of my, my actually my biggest inspiration, which was Steve O'Shea. He studied giant squids. He studies cephalopods, but mainly giant squids. And that's kind of, that's, I want to be exactly like him, but study um, more of all the cephalopods, mainly octopuses though. But he created... Uh, he had this documentary of the colossal squid. And then the next episode after that was actually all dedicated to Humboldt squids. And so there's this ex-military guy and he was extremely fascinated by Humboldt squid. So um, the um, Discovery Channel followed them around and he actually had a full chain armor, which they use for going underwater when they swim with sharks. Now, if you think of that, that chain armor is extremely strong because that's supposed to help from sharks not piercing through. But when he went in the water, it was at night too. These humble squids were just going after him one by one and they were piercing through it and biting him. And I think, I think it was like less than a minute. The guy said, I'm done. I got to get out of here because he's, he's in after he showed his bites. They were, they were nasty looking. And so that is, a really big reason why these things so many people fear of the Humboldt squids and Humboldt's have an extreme growth rate to where they only live to about a year. Now this is probably one of the facts that really stunned me the most because I was thinking one year, these things grow to about six feet long, hundred plus pounds and they only live to about one year. Well, I was kind of thinking too, like, the giant Pacific octopus is three to five years and it takes them to grow to, um, they can grow even larger than that, but only one year. That's pretty amazing. So there's um, one reason why, well, there's probably a few reasons, but I have a reason here why their growth rate is so um, exponential. So, to support a humble squid growth rate, they actually wipe out populations of fishes and also small groups of squids when their numbers explode. So they really, they commit mass genocide. Like what a bunch of farts. They, they destroy populations of fish and squids. So they're, they're cannibals, obviously. But now a cool little fact about it um, they created like sport fishing actually to hunt down humbled squids. I know I'm not really the biggest fan of when I see uh, squids at like seafood restaurants or anything, but like humbled squids, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty fine with that because these things, the humbled squids, their populations can grow so big to where they will, will like literally wipe out the food industry in some local areas. And so they actually have to go hunting for them that take a whole bunch of humble squids out. That's how many humble squids are out there and how, the damage that they can do. However, baby humbles hatch to about a millimeter to a stunning two meters in just one year. So that's pretty just amazing. So. Uh, their growth rate is through the roof and is probably one of the most uh, fastest growth rates um, in all animals in the world. There are a few animals that do beat that. And like the Argonaut, female humbles reproduce multiple times in their short lifespan. So they reproduce internally and lay masses of eggs up to one million. That is such a high number of eggs. And that makes so much sense now why their numbers explode sometimes. And another really interesting fact about um, in total, how much they can lay a year, this number is very um, exponential. So in total through their whole life, they can lay to 
20 million eggs, which is a record for most of any cephalopods that we know of today. So that is absolutely bizarre. And again, that's why it makes all sense now how their why their numbers explode because they lay so many eggs in just one shot. Humble squids also live in large groups called shoals, and a single shoal can have numbers as big as 1,200 humble squids. So imagine 1,200 humble squids and they have this small school of fish. Like these things will wipe them out in minutes. And I'm not going to lie, I always thought about this. Um, I would much rather be in the ocean with a great white shark than a shoal of humble squids because these things will bite you, but it will be slow and painful while as a shark and you can just take a whole half of you and you're fine. These things are just, just absolutely horrific. However, like their cousin, the giant squid, humble squids have giant teeth like rings embedded in their suction cups. Now, I shouldn't just say the cousin, their giant squid. Many, well, all, mostly, oh my goodness, I can't get my words out today. I apologize, guys. Mostly all squids have the chitin teeth in their suction cups. So here's one other really amazing fact. And now this is the fact of their superpower. Now, this is probably one of the most bizarre things I have ever heard of in a cephalopod. So humble squids uses metabolic suppression to survive within water, col water columns with dissolved oxygen concentration. So what this does, it actually gives them this ultimate ad advantage to capture prey a whole lot easier and to also hide from their predators. And most predators can't reach them because of the dissolved oxygen concentration. So what they really do is just kind of amazing. They kind of suppress their whole entire body. And so they use metabolic suppression as a mean of reducing ATP demand under hypoxia. That is amazing. And now if you guys don't know what, if you guys are not really sure what ATP is, it is the uh, cell, which is in all um, animals in the world, which transfers energy throughout the whole entire body. So, hypoxia also is when there's not enough oxygen in your body and so for us that is extremely vital and um, it doesn't lead out to very good uh, occasion for us but however for these guys they can kind of control this they suppress their body they can kind of pause the ATP under this the uh, um, reduction of oxygen throughout their body so it's literally a superpower i think so that is one beautiful fact about humble squid now i have two more slides for you now these are about uh pictures of the humble squid so the first one is literally just what a humble squid looks like now if you guys didn't know what a humble squid looks like at first if i didn't notice if i kind of looked at this i would be like this kind of looks really close to a giant squid. Now you can tell there are visible small differences that a uh, giant squid doesn't have, but it looks almost identical to one. See the eye, it almost looks, it looks identical to a giant squid eye. And then you have the elongated body, which the giant squid has as well. But what's a little bit different is the uh, humble squid has those bigger fins for um, propelling out of the water. But then if you look at the suction cups, you know, they also have like these little, um, probably like little cartilage spines that hang out and they're right on the outside of the suction cups. So that is kind of one factor that you can distinct between the humble squid versus the giant squid because the giant squid doesn't have those. And then if you look inside of the crown of arms of the, our humble squid, you see this huge mass here. That is the beak. And now they give you a little representation of what the beak, how big it is. Um, it's about like this big. So it's, it's about here. It is a really big beak. It is menacing. And that's why it makes so much sense that it can could pierce through that metal of that guy's uh, suit. And um, they aren't friendly into another cool, I want to say really cool, but another interesting thing 
about that episode of Humboldt Squid. They actually captured a female Humboldt Squid and they wanted to see the life of how Humboldt Squids operate during the night. And so what he did was he, I want to say he, he also had a, 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 a group with them. They put a camera on top of the mantle of the humbled squid and they put her back in the water and she went back to her shoal and the humbled squid members decided to kind of uh, observate her a little bit, investigate what's on her. And what they decided to do was truly unexpected. They took, they shredded the camera off of the poor female humbled squid. And then after they tore her apart and ate her. So, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> Humble squids are a little mean there. And also, when they can't find food around, they'll also eat each other. So, they are extremely different species of squid. <laughs> they have their own unique taste. And then, last but not least, we get a little closer look of what a uh, humbled squid uh, suction cup looks like. Now, again, when I talked about the suction cups of the like giant squid, the octopus, um, what this does, it just kind of has like the same exact suction cup of an octopus. It latches on and then those teeth will dig in. And then it's about 10 times even harder for the fish to go away. So you literally, you have no chance to go and then you're just food. But if you remember from the suction cup video here, you see those little, excuse me, see those little lines, that's the epithelium. Right here is the acetabulum and then inside more is the infindibulum. And then you have the um, nerves running all through the um, arms. And then you have all the neurons and stuff to help operate the arms and suction cups. Just geeking out a little bit, you know? But anyways, guys, that is the end of my video today about the humbled squid. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully you guys learned something amazing about humbled squid. Probably the biggest one you guys will say is humble squid are mean. Yes, they are. They are not the most friendliest species of cephalopods out there. They have their own unique thinking and processing ideas, but they also have that amazing superpower. And that's about it. So again, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And have a great day, everybody.